to move to the right for every uh, unit that it moves up. So what I can do is just count. It goes one, two, three, four, five to the right when it goes one, two, three up. So for every three up, it goes five to the right. And that's uh, what slope is. Some people say it's rise over run, where rise means how much up did it go from where it started. So it ended up going up one, two, three. And run means how far sort of to the right does it go. So it's going one, two, three, four, five to the right. A couple of observations here. Um, the, the answer to this question is, is uh, plot positive 3 over 5. Again, it had to be positive because the line was going up from left to right. I also knew it had to be some kind of a, a fraction that's less than 1 because a slope of 1 looks like this. It's like the diagonal of one of these squares. And this is a little bit less steep than this, which would have a slope of exactly 1. Now there's also a formula, and the formula is slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you basically have to choose which is point 1 and which is point 2. If, if you're calling the 3, 5, point 1, this would be x1, y1. And if you're calling negative 2, 2, point number 2, this would be x2, y2. And if you plug these in, you get y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. And if a uh, fraction has negative on the top and the bottom, we can kind of reduce it, turn it into regular 3 over 5 because negative divided. So for all these reasons, the answer to question number four is choice two. Moving on to question number five, it says, what are the vertex and axis of symmetry of the parabola shown in the diagram below? Well, <clears throat> the vertex of a parabola is the low point of it, or the high point if it's a parabola that's kind of frowning like that. But otherwise, if it's a smiling parabola, this is the low point. So the location of this point is, um, we count uh, to the right, one to the right, and one, two, three, four down, which is why the, uh, the vertex is, is one, negative four. That, that gets rid of these two choices. Now, the axis of symmetry is an imaginary line that cuts the parabola into two equal pieces as a line of symmetry. Notice how it's a vertical line. Now the thing that uh, every point on a vertical line has in common is that it has the same exact x-coordinate, which in this case is uh, x equals 1. See all the points on this line, this is 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, they all have x-coordinate equals 1. That's why the uh, equation of this vertical line, which is the axis of symmetry, is x equals 1. Notice how that's also uh, the x-coordinate of the vertex is 1. That's why the answer to this question is choice 1. Question 6 is pretty lengthy to read, um, but you have three juniors, Reese, Matthew, and Chris, that are running for student council president. A uh, survey is taken a week before the election asking 40 students who they'll vote for, and here are, here are the results. So of the uh, 40 people, 15 say they're going to vote for Reese, 13 say they're going to vote for Matthew, and 12 say they're going to vote for Chris. And the question is, what's the probability that a student will vote for Reese? Uh, a better way of saying this question would be that if they pick one of these 40 students at random, what is the probability that they will be voting for, for Reese? Well, there are 40 students, and of those students, 15 of them are, uh, are going to vote for Reese. So that means that 15 out of the possible 40 people are voting for Reese. And that will also be the, the probability, if you select somebody at random, that they'll vote for Reese. If you reduce this fraction by dividing top and bottom by 5, you'll get 3 eighths, 
which, uh, which is the answer to this question. Choice three. For question seven, they'd like to know which linear equation represents a line containing the point one comma three. You can take a moment to try to work this one. Now this is a very uh, important question. It has a lot of concepts in it. So I want to give you the idea of what is meant by uh, a linear equation. A linear equation is an equation that's got an x and a y in it, like x plus y equals 10. That is a linear e equation. Now, a linear equation like x plus y equals 10 has a solution set, meaning there are pairs of numbers like 2 plus 8 that add up to 10, 5 plus 5 adds up to 10, 1 plus 9 adds up to 10, and there's an infinite number of them. There are also a lot of pairs of numbers that don't add up to 10, um, like 1 plus 3. So if I were to make a graph these three points, uh, 2 comma 8, 1, 2, 3, that's 2, 8, and 5, 5, and 1 comma 9, which is up here, they seem to fall on the same line, and, 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 and they do. If I were to connect these dots, I would get a line that represents the complete solution set to this equation, x plus y equals 10. So any two numbers that you could think of that add up to 10 will be uh, the point representing those two numbers will be on this line. So what we, so what we would say is that this line, x plus y equals 10, contains the points 2, 8, 5, 5. Now you could verify if I gave you a point and said does 3 comma 1 is that on the line? Well you could say well 3 plus 1 is not 10 so no or you could just try it you plug it into the equation 3 plus 1 equals 10 and since it doesn't the end, that, that point would not be on the line. So now they explain another linear or, or, or they want to know if the point 1 comma 3 is on any of the lines that they describe in their in their answer choices. Well we don't have to actually graph them we could just still test the point. So to test choice 1 x plus 2y equals 5 if you plug 1 in for x and 3 in for y it's just not true. So that's not the answer. But if you try all the choices you will eventually get to choice number 3 where they want to know if 2x plus y equals 5 would contain that point. Well, if you put 1 in for x and 3 in for y, you get 2 times 1 plus 3 equals 5, which means, which becomes 5 equals 5, and it does. And uh, that means that the point 1 comma 3 would be on the line represented by the equation 2x plus y equals 5, although we don't need to actually graph it in order to determine that. For question 8, they want to know how you can simplify the expression square root of 72 minus 3 times the square root of 2. You can take a minute to try to select the proper answer. Now in order to do a question like this we have to go over some concepts about uh, square roots. So let's start with just the idea that the square root of 25 is the number that when multiplied by itself becomes 25 and if you go through your times tables 2 times 2 is 4, that's too small. 3 times 3 is 9, that's too small. But 5 times 5 is 25. So square root of 25 does equal 5. And square root of 36 equals 6. And as long as this number is a perfect square, like 49 is 7 times 7. Now, um, the square root of 72, however, 72 is not a perfect square. 8 squared is 64, which is a little less than 72, and 9 squared is 81, which is a little more than 72. So the square root of 2 is 8 point something. It's somewhere between 8 and 9. Um, but we can simplify it a bit. And here's, here's the idea that's going to allow us to simplify things. If you take two different square roots, like the square root of 4 times the square root of 9, which is equal to 2 times 3, which is equal to 6, 